Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Uladu Narkadu. Know thus, just as one would dive, restraining one's speech and breath, to find something which has fallen into the water, one should dive within oneself, restraining speech and breath with a keen mind, that is, with a keen and penetrating attention fixed on the feeling I, and know the real self, which is the rising place or source of the ego, which rises first. So, people ask me how a lot. How do I meditate? How do I realize the self? How do I know I'm not fooling myself or kidding myself? Huh? The mind is very deceptive and can often give us an illusion of self-realization that we don't really have. So how do we keep from self-deception? Well, the answer is here. If you can dive deep within yourself. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I've done a lot of free diving, skin diving as it's called. And of course you have to hold your breath and dive down into the water and look around or whatever you're gonna do. Huh? So it's like that. The truth is hidden within us but it's not on the surface. One has to dive deep. And it feels like that. It feels like restraining the breath, concentrating the mind, and making a one-pointed effort. So when people ask how, uh, I like to refer them to the esoteric teaching system where we're talking about holographic meditation. Holographic meditation means that one approaches the subject or the uh, theme of the meditation from many different angles at once. If the theme is the self, then one approaches from a pragmatic and practical point of view. One follows the instructions of one's spiritual master. One also cultivates bhakti, love for the self. And then there's a mantra you can chant uh, and specific types of meditation designed to reveal the self. That's what this verse is about. In Raja Yoga, the reference is often made to controlling the breath. But that doesn't mean that we control the breath and then meditate. <laughs> or that controlling the breath is a cause of meditation or enlightenment. It's not. What it means is that when the mind is one-pointed and directed toward the actual topic, the actual subject of the meditation, I, I am, the self, consciousness, or Brahman, then automatically the breath comes under control. We don't have to make a separate effort. Uh, my Chinese Qigong teacher always said, the qi follows the yi. What does that mean? <laughs> well, qi is prana, or breath, life energy. And yi means the directed intelligence, the intention. So if the intention is properly formed, then the breath and energy will follow. That's an automatic. So uh, I encourage you to review the esoteric teaching series on holographic meditation. And of course, somebody is going to ask, well, how do you do it? <laughs> well, you begin by taking care of business. Karma yoga. Karma yoga means, really, creating the conditions where meditation is possible. 
So it means having a silent, private space where you can meditate, whatever that takes. And uh, also keeping it clean and keeping your body clean and healthy. Not allowing things to slide so that they become worries. But taking care of things timely and efficiently so that the business is complete in the present. Then you don't have to worry about anything. You can meditate without a care in the world. And then right view. One should receive the instructions from one's spiritual teacher, guide, or guru. And what does that mean? It means hearing. Hearing and repeating them to yourself, at least, or to others, until you're absolutely certain you understand. Because the best way to learn something is to teach others. So in that way, one can be sure one has right view and then form the intention based on that right view. What's the next step after karma yoga? Bhakti. So bhakti means developing love and affection. For what? Well, whatever is the subject of your meditation. If you're uh, focused on bhakti, you may uh, select some form of God. God has eight basic forms that are given in the Dakshina Murti Stotram. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, the moon, the sun, and the jiva, the living entity. So one can worship God in all of these forms, in any of them, whatever is convenient. So if, for example, one's ideal of divine personality is Shiva, one can worship Shiva in the temple or in the form of the hill. Huh? Or if one prefers Vishnu, any of the incarnations of Vishnu, huh? there's so many, so many forms of God, different personalities which have divine qualities. Uh, one can worship one's guru, guru puja or guru bhakti. This is a very good form. Or one can worship one's self. Not the petty little individual ego, but the real self, which is actually the goal of this meditation. So then one moves on from bhakti to raja yoga. Now raja yoga does talk about controlling the breath, but not by effort. That's Hatha Yoga. Hatha Yoga is way down the list on Karma Yoga, taking care of the body. So it may be helpful to do some breathing exercises if, for example, your breathing capacity is low or uh, your uh, cardio uh, stamina is low. One should do some breathing exercises to increase lung capacity and like that. That's all right. But that's not pranayama. Don't fool yourself. Real pranayama means controlling the prana, not just the breath. So the prana should be tranquil, calm, focused, easy, smooth, gentle, and full of pleasure. Uh, that's real control of the breath. Now, what you can do is simply watch the breath. And of course, in the beginning, you're going to try to control it. <laughs> so the trick here is to watch the breath, but also be watching for other things such as light. When light comes in meditation, that's a very good sign. That means your concentration is getting good. So not just watching the breath, because that's going to put too much attention on the body, but also watching the mind, watching thoughts, watching uh, for light, watching for one's attention. And if you can watch your watching, well, that's really excellent. <laughs> attention of attention, consciousness of consciousness 
awareness of awareness. This is the sublime height of Raja Yoga. And what that leads to is Jnana Yoga. Jnana Yoga means being aware of the self. Not just the ego, but the real self, the source of the ego. So you can begin Jnana Yoga once you've understood its principle, which you can very easily understand by this series, Uladu Narpadu, or Upadesha Undiyar, and see where the ego arises. Now, when Bhagavan says where, he doesn't mean a physical location. He means the psychological or spiritual origin of the ego. Where does ego come from? Ego is a lie. Ego is an illusion. But it's based on something real. And that is the real self. So the only reason ego has any standing at all, or seems to be a reality at all, is because it's based on the self. When the self is found, ego disappears. And that's the actual conclusion or aim of jnana yoga. Not that we should uh, try to artificially repress breathing or any of our energies, but when we concentrate the mind and aim it properly at realizing the self, then our energy becomes very smooth and light, gentle, uh, amiable, <laughs> and kind. And we automatically experience calmness, centeredness, focus, enthusiasm, and pleasure within the mind. That's real meditation. And that cannot be shaken by anything outside. So, as it's said, the dogs may bark, <laughs> but the king's caravan will pass. What does that mean? That once you attain or grasp the actual subject of meditation, then nothing can disturb it. How is that? There's so many distractions in life. Well. Every day we go through so many experiences, waking, dreaming, sleeping, different kinds of activity. We experience different kinds of sense impressions and so on. But there's one thing that's always there, and that is awareness. Even during deep sleep, although there's nothing to be aware of, we are still aware. And we can be aware of being aware even in deep sleep. So one should train oneself, beginning at the moment of awakening in the morning, to try to stay in that space of deep sleep without any dreams. On the one side you have the dreams of sleep, and on the other side you have the dreams of awakening in the body. Stay between them. Don't go to either side, sleeping or waking, huh? but stay in that sweet space right in between and you'll find something wonderful, huh? which is that all these experiences are simply dreams. We can dream while asleep and then that whole world disappears, that body disappears, those senses and all the people and so on that we interact with in dreams. And then another dream body comes, and another dream world, and another series of dream interactions with dream people. <laughs> and why are they dreams? Because they're temporary. In other words, this, this world of the senses disappears when we enter sleep, and another world appears. And then that world disappears when we enter deep sleep, shushupti. So 
They are both temporary. They are both unreal. They are both a dream. And that is jnana. That is knowledge. That is self-realization. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Om.